What's that? I missed a video. What do you mean I missed a video? I didn't mean to miss a video. Um, um, guys, I, I'm sorry I missed the video. I've uh, just been a little addicted to playing some Zelda here uh, with the new game coming out, and ooh, I didn't mean <laughs> to leave the video so long. But this week yeah, in the video, it's going to be something really fun and interesting. I wanted to improve my dry brushing for improving my slap chop technique. Like I said, uh, I've had a lot of comments in the videos about my slap chop video, comparing them to the other. Uh, dry brushing styles and painting styles for slap chop and I wanted to improve myself on the uh, dry brushing ability and get that slap chop technique up to something that I really really enjoy and really like and I think you guys will like it too so let's get into that video and let's see how my new technique came out and it's going to completely change the way I dry brush from now on so let's get into it Okay, so these are going to be the miniatures we're going to be using for our experiment today. And they're all little stone golems here. And so this is going to be show off the dry brushing technique nice and easily, hopefully. Because they've all got nice little rocky textures and a lot of areas where dry brushing can really bring them out. And as you can see, we've got quite a few of them here. So we've got quite a lot of chances to see how our technique's going to be um, applied to each one. And before I get started, just to make sure uh, that I can keep track of this as I'm doing since we're doing dry brushing here and a lot of the uh, styles could come out very similar so in case of that I'm just going to be placing a number on each one of the bottoms of these miniatures so I know for my own reference what technique I've used on watch one so it's going to be nice and simple it's just giving them all a quick painting underneath with a number on them so I don't lose track of them maybe a good idea for you if you ever want to try this out for yourself but this is the goal of the video is to try and see uh the differences between them so i'm doing it here and making it nice and convenient for you so you don't have to and giving you the full view and scope of each one so hopefully this is a comprehensive sort of guide for you guys okay so our test number one of our dry brushing technique is gonna be our stock standard dry brushing that you learn whenever you start miniature painting or at least when i first started miniature painting anyway and that is i went out i brought some dry brush brushes that you know they're marked dry brushing and people tell you that you get a dry brush you put your paint on it and then you get it onto a paper towel you work off what you need until you've got basically nothing on there and then you start carefully and lightly just brushing away trying to catch all those highest points on the miniature and then as you get your miniature you get it on and then you just scrub away going generally you're told up and down and getting those highest points going with a firm grip not too harsh a grip on your model and keeping your brush in a tight grip as well and then just streaking it sort of up and down trying to catch all those raised areas and then just working it all over the miniature that was the way I was first told and that was the way I did dry brushing for quite a while you go back and see some very old videos on my channel and you'll see that I did this dry brushing technique like a lot of people did and you can see that it's not if, I mean it, is, it does work but it just doesn't give the results that I'm after and especially with the um, way that a lot of people are after now especially with the slap chop technique a lot of people are after really nice ways and giving out big bright bold and vibrant uh, contrasting colors when you're dry brushing so then now we've got that gray down it's time to come in with our white now with this original technique in our dry brushing it is notorious for giving off a very chalky look you even see it as I'm applying it here to the model and I'm trying to get a good coverage of white here I'm just placing it straight on the paper towel that was where I was told you just work it in and you get it all in there to get a nice good coating on your brush like I said before in the last step and then giving it that good streak over top like we did just before you can see I've worked it to where I was happy with it with getting the gray on it now with the white and you can see immediately I've got way too much on my paint and that is working it off as much as I could uh, while doing it on the paper towel but as as you know the paper towel is also white the one especially the one that I was using so it was very hard to see the difference here and you can see it's very going on very very thick not how I want it to and it's leaving a lot of streaks now I am not intentionally trying to uh, misdirect you here I really was trying to do it the best to my ability and this was a big problem I had when I very first started out my channel doing dry brushing that's why I stopped dry brushing for quite a while until I 
discovered the technique I'll show up next is that I wasn't happy with this blotchy and chalky look that it would give off and it would just make everything look really scratchy it's okay if you're going for that sort of look but a lot of times I wasn't I was still trying to go for a quite decent nice and clean look and it, I just never get it so I stopped dry brushing for quite a while and you can see why this is now sort of an old technique that no one really uses so maybe as a beginner you do but if you can uh, avoid this step now it's definitely going to lead to a better painting experience down in the long run and this here is how the first stone golem ended up by looking so as you can see we've got quite a bit of chalkiness on there and we weren't going for that uh, slap chop technique that everyone's after for trying to get that nice fast and efficient and really good paint jobs very quickly and I must say I'm not happy with it I don't use this technique anymore but I wanted to put this in here to show you what the old way of doing dry brushing used to be and how it's changed uh, to now and you see in the next step which is the one that I use quite a lot so let's get into that next step and let's see how we can improve upon this method Okay, so in dry brush test number two, this is what I use now at currently at the moment before this new technique, which is our third one, which I'll be switching to, of what I used to use for many years, and you've seen a lot of my videos right up to this one here, of how I do dry brushing, and that was to get a makeup brush, a nice cheap makeup brush, I go down to a dollar store, go get a nice cheap makeup brush, a nice big soft one, and then I was told to wet it just a little bit and dry it out. Uh, so your bristles were nice and wet and so it wouldn't um, cause the paint to go too chalky and uh, work with that and use that as a basis as well as don't use the uh, paper towel for placing your paint on use a bit of wood with some texture in it and see I've scratched up some texture here so I got a little bit of like a tooth for it to work some of it off as I'm trying to get most of the paint off my brush and then apply that to the miniature itself and then as you're supposed to be working on the miniature you're depositing a lot less on it because you've already got that nice textured surface with the wood because uh, it's a better uh, what do you call it a better surface for to work the paint off on and you can see here that I'm getting a lot more uh, subtle effect especially since we've got that nice big makeup brush it has a lot of uh, big wide open area and soft bristles not super hard like a dry brush uh, brush the one that I used in the last step has very stiff bristles and this here has a lot softer bristles and the idea was it's supposed to go over top of everything and really easily pick out those highlighted areas and you can see here it's picking up the highlights very quickly and I'm getting a lot faster result than in my previous test and it you just work it in and keeping that uh, intensity up by giving it a nice not too hard uh, the pressure just soft enough because we've got this nice big bristled brush and it's applying a lot of it without any effort and then when you're moving on to the next step with your white you just apply that straight away working it off again on that bit of uh, wood that I have off to the side uh, to work up with our white and then not worrying about the colors in between so it gives you a better transition than it's supposed to and you just work it and you can see I'm just going all over I'm not strictly going up and down like I said in the first technique which was the first way I was told to dry brush was always to go up and down so you try to get the light with the way I used to do it it's just you just go in go circles go left to right it doesn't really matter the, uh, the softness of the brush is what lets it go over any surface and lets that paint come out and pick out all of those highlighted areas and you see it does quite a decent job but let's move on to that uh, final picture of how it come out like in the end so we can see what it looks like and here it is the results of our second test and you can see we've got a lot less chalkiness on it now I know this picture may not be the best in focus but it's a big improvement we don't have big streaks or chalk marks all over the area and we've got a pretty decent area from our highlights to our shadows but let's move on to the new technique that I've been using and let's see how that compares to this technique here okay so for this technique here I'm gonna need to show you the prep that went into creating this technique uh, I didn't create this technique uh, it was shown by other people online and I decided to give it a try out and that is to make a dry palette and the idea of this is you grab a bunch of junk essentially that you have from your collection so little bits odds and ends sprues 
anything you can use to attach to a dry pallet and as you can see here for the basis of the dry pallet I'm using the lid of an ice cream container that uh, I use uh, totally up to you what you want to use here any sort of container but one thing I do want to say is you want it a decent size so this here I've got it roughly the size of my wet pallet I have here and like the name implies being a dry pallet is something that you use to prepare your paints before applying it to the miniature and as you can see here I'm just grabbing some super glue grabbing bits of sprue and other bits of models that I don't use anymore from my bits box uh, all sorts of little things including uh, sand and texture paint I use a whole bunch of different things to apply this and you just glue it in random areas and the idea of it is that you have this on here so you can use it as a testing ground for your uh, application of your paint and I'll be able to show you that in some later steps but for now I'm just gluing it on and seeing uh, where I can create it on here roughly to give me some nice texture okay so now I've got my first layer of my texture for my dry palette and now the second layer is to gonna I'm gonna be using some sand from my driveway like I use a lot of basing on my miniatures itself now this isn't gonna be the last step I've got some uh, glue placed down I just had some uh, Super glue, just place it on the bottom one to try to get this done as fast as I could. Because, like you've seen in the intro, I'm a little addicted to playing the new Zelda game at the moment. So, I wanted to get this over and done with it. Probably a bit faster, uh, not faster, a bit more advisable to use maybe some PVA glue or some Mod Podge, something like that, that'll probably give a bit better grip. Because I'm finding that uh, using this now, sometimes you can have little chunks. Uh, accidentally flick off but the way I solved this is I just applied a, another layer of super glue over the whole top to lock everything in place then I have this at this point in the stage and I see that uh, well, you can see quite clearly that there's some areas still missing so I decided to actually use some texture paste I thought hey that's gonna give me another complete texture but one thing I'd actually advise you to do uh, instead of what I did here is if you do have texture paste and you want to apply it to this texture palette um, or this dry palette here apply the texture paste before you apply your sand you want to use your sand or your grit whatever you're using as sort of the final step over top to make it nice and uh, easy so what you should do is apply your texture paste let that dry out completely and then place the sand on any of the gaps that you missed out it's a little bit easier that way rather than you can see here you're finding some areas where it's a little bit hard to squish it and place it in uh, places around the sand especially because it has a good chance of being really hard to get in and I have to work it in a lot more than I have to just to save you an unnecessary hassle so that's just one thing I noticed when I was making my dry pellet and there you have it there's my dry pellet slash texture pellet all complete I've just given it a black prime so I can use it for the step it's intended for but another thing I want to mention while doing this step is there is another thing you want as well and that is to be creating a little thing like this which is simply just a sponge and a little container with a, a lid on it uh, totally up to you but a sponge and a container anyway where you can use to apply the perfect amount of water to your dry brush and for this step here I went out and actually brought some fancy dry brushes because uh, they had a sale coming up I want to give them a test and I found out that uh, the miniature dry brushes that places like uh, Army Painter and Artist Opus and that have come up with are different to uh, the actual uh, makeup brush that I've been using. It's actually way stiffer. Uh, not It's not completely stiff. It's still very, very soft, but it's a very different texture. So yeah, interesting to see how I can show you as we're applying it how different it is to our original paint here but one thing I am going to be doing as you can see here is I'm still going to be applying it to my uh, wooden palette totally up to you if you want to do this I just because we're doing these tests here I had my wood palette here to place the paint on right next to it but totally not necessary you could use any old palette for that so I just grabbed that and as you can see here I've got my cup of water and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the back of my brush grabbing the water from that and I'm using two drops or three drops just a little bit enough to wet the sponge so I wouldn't recommend it probably any more than three drops it comes out reasonably wet and then it's just a matter of dabbing it in placing it in there getting it a bit of a work around and it gives you the perfect amount of uh, moisture in your brush so now onto the actual dry brushing itself so grabbing our palette here that we've got so I was using my bit of wood like I was using before dabbing on my 
brush loading it up how I would usually, but this time instead of dry brushing it onto here, trying to work the paint off, I'm going to be using our texture palette slash dry palette, and it's just working it in and around like you would be doing an ordinary dry brush on anything. It's a great way to work out that perfect amount. One thing I very much struggled with with dry brushing and did right up until now uh, is getting when you hit that paint for the very first time onto the miniature it would immediately give a big chunk of paint applied immediately and it would basically ruin the piece because you're trying to scramble and work it off as fast as you can and this completely eliminates a step now maybe you guys are smarter than I am and know to work it a bit more but I've very much struggled with that first application when as soon as that paint hits the model for the very first time of leaving a big splotchy mess no matter how much I tried to work off the brush I could never figure the perfect amount but now with this texture palette slash dry palette I can work off enough of it immediately and I miss that first horrible step and I can go straight into working it off a little bit getting that perfect amount and then applying it to my miniature and my miniature comes out with a way better result immediately rather than getting that first ugly splotch on the miniature so then coming in with that gray and now we're coming in with our white doing the exact same thing where I applied it to my texture palette first and working it and you can see immediately it's giving a much more subtle result now one thing I didn't actually notice till afterwards is I'm actually getting pure white off this without leaving a very chalky uh, mess that very much happened with the last two steps or even with the second uh, application of the dry brushing did it didn't actually go completely white it may look like it but when we when I show you them next to each other at the end it is very stark in contrast to this one here where I actually end up by getting white uh, highlights all the way up to white with a dry brush so it gives you that highest point of highlights and it's great for the slap chop technique and as you can see you work it in like any other and because you've got that texture palette you've got that perfect application of the paint to somewhere else first before touching a model to get that perfect amount and then here they all are all three of them next to each other so you can see here here's our first dry brushing technique our second dry brushing technique and our third and final dry brushing technique now you can see immediately look at that it has actual white and there's a big difference in the transition of colors I know my focus is a little wonky I try to get it in a bit of focus as I can uh, but you can clearly see that as I'm turning them around here you can see there's some chalkiness there's a lot of streaks where I don't want it to be I want it to be a nice smooth transition but it didn't end up being our second technique way way better than our first technique and you can see here we've got it but the uh, transitions are not as great as I want it to be a lot of people were saying especially in my uh, slap chop video that they wanted a little less chalkiness in there and then with our third result we have a nice even tone throughout and we've dry brushed on white and it hasn't come out chalky at all it looks like I've applied a layer of white paint okay so just before we go on to our final shots to see how each one of these compares one thing I do want to mention as I do this is I still had three other uh, of these stone golems left over uh, after this technique and I wanted to see how far I could push and improve this technique by just practicing it over again coming up with a couple of different variations and you know what I'm doing is I will show you them at the end and you can see how far you can push this technique but uh, just wanted to let you know that I still had a couple more left over and that was my very very first attempt at ever doing this technique so I still had some left over so I wanted to refine it so I'll show you what those refined ones comes up uh, came out like in the end and show you them all compared to each other I also painted them up so let's see how they came out so here we are here is the final results of all of our tests and you can see how the miniatures came out after applying our slap chop painting technique to them so they all got a nice uh, coat of uh, griff charger gray and some nice green for the eyes giving them a uh, golemy sort of look and you can see that I did it to show off the main of the dry brushing technique and not applying too much paint to each one of them and I'm showing them in order so our first one that we've seen was our first technique our second technique this is our third technique and then this one here and from here on uh, are the ones where I tried to iterate on the process and with that third technique and coming out with better and better results each time and that is I tried a 
pressing harder on my brush, pressing lighter on my brush, coming up with a variety of ways. And what I found out was going with a medium pressure and slowly working in circles, building it up slowly, a little bit of paint at a time. And then I thought, these are a little bit boring and you can't see it applied with actual color. So I wanted to get a nice bright miniature in there and you could really see how it comes out. And then I painted up this toy dinosaur here. And you can see that the colors are so vibrant and it's such a great technique and the blends and transitions between those highlights and shadow colors are great. So I just wanted to uh, show that off with an actual bunch of paint on there so you can really see how it came out in the end. So with all of that guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you and improving your dry brushing and slap chop painting technique. So I really hope this video has uh, really helped you out and this here is going to change my way of dry brushing from now on. Just something nice and simple as having that texture palette and the way you apply your paint and water to your dry brush really makes a massive difference as you can see here with the, all these miniatures all together all painted up in the nice and easy way and I hope that clarifies uh, some of the questions that I had answered in my original slap chop video where people really enjoyed the slap chop technique but they wanted to know how they could improve it and get a lot less of that chalkiness there so I spent a little bit of time researching and I came up with this video so I hope this video as I said has been helpful for you guys and in improving your dry brushing techniques and with all that said i'd like to thank you all for watching and i can't wait to see you all in the next video